In this workshop, you're going to learn how to write your first assignment. Going to look at the different types of assignments, such as essays and reports. We'll also look at how to analyze the question. So we'll be looking at assignment questions and the directions, and we'll be looking at the rubric and marking guides. Next, we're going to look at planning and preparing your assignment, including where to find suitable resources for research. And finally, the workshop's going to look at how to structure and format your assignment so it's suitable for academic style at KBS. So think about which of these are true in academic writing. Does it use formal language or is it written for entertainment? Do you need to include references? Should you have a clear structure? Is an essay and a report similar in terms of structure? Do you know if you have to do group work? Do you think an assignment is gonna help you to understand the topic or is it just a test of how well you can use Google? Well, these are the answers. Academic language does use formal language. It's not written for entertainment. It's very important to include references and have a clear structure. Um, you may have to do group work for one of your assignments. And one of the main reasons students are asked to write assignments is because it helps them to understand a subject or a topic more thoroughly. This workshop is really aimed at students who haven't written assignments before. It could be that in your previous education institution, you mainly had to do exams. Um, so you may be unfamiliar with longer written pieces of work. So let's start with some three simple steps. Understanding what you're expected to do. And this means understanding the assignment question. It's important to understand how the assignment's going to be graded. So you can organize your work and your research by knowing exactly where you're getting the points for this assignment. And it's also really important to know where to find suitable information. Think about why you're being asked to write an assignment. It's not just to make you suffer. Um, your tutors want you to write an assignment because it really helps you to learn about the topic. When you write an assignment, it involves you doing your own research and your own reading. And that actually will help you to learn a lot more. Let's just skip to the last one. Assignments prepare students for their professional life. So when you go and work in industry, you will be asked to write reports. Um, so writing these assignments helps you prepare for that professional life. Probably the most important thing I want to focus on is that your tutors want you to prove that you have fulfilled the learning objectives. What's a learning objective? You'll find that your learning objectives are outlined in your course syllabus, um, in your weekly lectures, and also in your assignments. And this learning objectives helps the tutors to measure your achievements. So here are some example learning objectives from one of the subjects. And notice how they use these command words like employ, relate, apply, demonstrate. So the assignments help to prove that you have fulfilled these learning objectives. What are you being asked to do? So be before you start writing and researching, Check whether you're being asked to write a report or an essay. Generally, writing falls into these two categories. Reports have contents pages, headings and subheadings. You might be asked to write a case study report, a reflective report, a data analysis report. 
Reports are structured in this way. They have subheadings. They often use figures and diagrams and all the information should be numbered. So double check with your tutor if you're unsure. Ask, am I supposed to write a report style or essay style? There are more resources on the ASC page which talk more about the structure of assignments um, in report style and assignments in essay style. The main difference with an essay is that it's written in paragraphs, it doesn't use headings, it doesn't use a contents page. So you might be asked to write a written analysis, a scenario, a reflection. Again, if you're unsure, check with your tutor. Do you want to have this essay style or report style? We're going to move on to looking at some assignment questions. This is a fictional assignment question. Let's just have a closer look. Most assignment questions are organized a little bit like this. So at the top of the page, it will tell you what the subject is and it will tell you hopefully whether you're supposed to write in report style or essay style. It tells you how many words, what weighting this is worth. So this is worth 30% of the subject total and you're gonna get 30 points. And it also tells you the due date. Have a look at this assignment question. If you look carefully, you can see this is actually asking you to do three different things. Describe the methods that an online travel company, Booking.com, uses to gather data. Analyze how Booking.com uses customer data and then evaluate whether the company is making full use of the data. So these are actually three sections. And you'll find this is quite common in KBS assignments. Um, an essay question might have two or three different parts that they want you to look at. A report could have even more sections. It might have four or five different sections where they want you to do different things. What you should be looking out for in particular is these command questions like describe, analyze, evaluate. I'm really thinking about what those mean. So for example, here, I've got a quiz that you can do. There is a link to all the quiz activities at the end of the video. I'm not gonna do them all now, but you can see these are the kind of command words that are commonly used in assignments like evaluate, explain, demonstrate. And these all have slightly different meanings. So for example, contrast means to show the differences. So have a go at doing that quiz at the end of this tutorial. All right, so here I um, have just picked out one section of the assignment question, the first one which was describe the methods online travel company booking.com uses to gather data. And I've just broken up that question a little bit. So the describe, the command word is describe, meaning to report something or illustrate something. Keyword there is booking.com. So I know in this assignment, I'm being asked to look at booking.com as a case study. And I want to focus, what does it actually mean to gather customer data? I might want to define some terms here. What do they mean by customer data? What customer data? And what are the methods in which customer data is gathered? One way to help you break down your assignment question, because these assignment questions are quite often complicated and using different parts is to make a grid that looks something like this. So in the grid, I've broken it down. This um, fictional 
assignment about booking.com had three different parts, three different aims, describe, analyze, evaluate. So I've put down my command words here. Think of those like doing words. They're telling you what you need to do in this assignment. So one way that students lose marks is they don't take enough notice of these doing words, these command words. Describing something is talking about something in quite a sort of shallow and general way to just describe something. And that's what they want for the first part of the sec this section. It's just kind of background information. It's um, just explaining without really much analysis or consideration. But the second part, they want you to do more analysis. They want you to think more deeply about the question. Um, and in the final section, they want to evaluate. Well, when they're evaluating, you're talking about whether something works or doesn't work. You're giving your opinion about what, what's suitable, um, what's not suitable. So you can see in this assignment, it starts off descriptive and it ends up with much more analysis and evaluation. So it, the assignment becomes more challenging as it gets to the final parts. Break down those main points and think about what do they really mean? What are the key words here? So we're looking at how data is gathered, used and making full use. What do they actually mean by that? One thing you can do to think about what the question means is to write down some ideas. Um, so here, I quite often try and use WH questions to help me think of information like, um, what is the issue? When does this happen? Why does this happen? What do other companies do? What did I learn in lectures? Finally, have a section where you can think of what information sources are useful. So quite often your assignment will be based on particular week's lectures. Your first assignment might be due in week five. So your first assignment is gonna be based on the information that you've learned in lectures one, two, three, and four. It's a good idea to ask your tutor, is there a particular week or week's lectures that are gonna be most useful for this assignment? And you'll find there probably is, there's probably gonna be some of the weeks where that information is really, really vital for your assignment. Another thing to think about is, um, is there any particular reading or sources that would be very useful for your assignment? How many references do you need? So quite often the assignment will tell you, you must use five different sources of information. Do any of those sources of information need to be academic or scholarly references like academic journals or textbooks? So again, this is all things that you can put in this information section. So here, when I was um, doing the describing bit, I thought, well, I'm really going to need some information from the company web page. And I also might want to look at some industry journals as well. Before you start writing, have a look at your assignment marking guide. This is the rubric. This will really help you because as you can see, each section, you can see where it's been allocated grades. So very often when students come to me and are disappointed with the grade that they've got, I'll take them back and say, let's have another look at that rubric. For example, there maybe were nine points for this particular section, you know, and then I'll say, okay, did you actually do an in-depth analysis here? Or did you just do a description? So again, you know, those command words, analysis, contrast, those are really important 
for getting those higher grades. So each of these sections has a particular um, number of points or marks allocated. And what will happen is your tutor will go through this rubric when they mark your work. And the idea is for fairness because students have different tutors. So it's a way of making sure that all the tutors are marking you in the same kind of way. If you're really one of those high achieving students and you want to get those HDs, have a look at what's expected in the HD section. Um, you'll quite often find for an HD, they talk about, you, about um, considering theoretical concepts and models. Well, what does that mean? That might be a very new idea to you. Um, they're going to be asking you to do critical discussion. Um, so here they're looking at theoretical concepts, uh, critical analysis, critical comparison. You need to have an understanding of what that means. And I'm not going to go too much in depth into that now because I don't have the time now in this workshop. But go and make an appointment with an academic learning advisor and they can give you a bit more of an idea about what those terms mean. Another thing to look out for is lecturers will often ask you to use up-to-date information. And that generally means things that have been published in the last five years. So check with your subject tutor exactly um, what they mean by up-to-date information. Final little thing about referencing. This is very important. And I think it's very confusing sometimes the way you can see there's five points here for um, the presentation quality. And you can see here, they've talked about referencing in this section. So please don't be confused and think, if I don't use referencing, I'm only gonna lose five points. If you don't use referencing, you will probably fail the whole assignment and be referred to academic integrity. Referencing is 100% necessary for any assignment. Um, if you don't do it, you, you're going you're gonna to just be in, in a bit of trouble. So please make sure you go along to one of the referencing workshops or talk to the academic um, learning advisors or your tutor about getting some help with referencing. All right, so we're ready to move on and start planning and start doing a little bit of research and reading to get ready for writing your assignment. Three places that you can start to do your research. First of all, first place to always go is to your lecture notes and your recommended reading. So every week, go to your subject resources, go to your workshop slides, as I said earlier, your assignment will relate to, to particular lectures and talk to your tutor, which lectures should you really focus on for this assignment? What you'll find is that underneath each week's lectures, there are a list of readings, recommended readings. Now, you're actually supposed to look at these readings every week. Um, you might have a list of five or more readings. Um, realistically, I don't expect I don't expect students are doing all that reading, but it's it's really beneficial if you include some of that reading material in your assignment. So again, you know, maybe go to your tutor and say, okay, um, which of these is most suitable for my assignment? Is there any of these readings that you particularly recommend? Okay, another place to look for information on your subject page is the learning forum. So what you'll find is that every week there are announcements and there are also recordings. And what I want you to look out for is assignment webinars. 
So you you get a lot of help at KBS. Your tutors may well put on additional information that will help you write your assignment, such as handouts or even webinars. And a webinar is when your tutor presents information and explains exactly how they want you to write the assignment. So before you even start, make sure that you've watched one of those webinars. Um, it's really going to be detrimental if you don't watch it. Um, it's The webinar is going to explain everything that your tutor wants you to do to succeed in your assignment. And so once you've read up the right lecture notes, the right reading, and you've watched your webinar, you can continue to start your research using the library. So have a start with the library. Um, the library subject guides are really good for finding suitable material. So I'll just show you, quickly show you the library subject page. Um, this is great because what they do is they have all the subjects, and they give you information about these subjects. So if I take, for example, business management, what you've got is all the key resources from the library. So they've given you access to all the eBooks that are recommended, all the different recommended journals and industry magazines. So, you know, for example, links to things like Forbes or the Australian Financial Review. So really good to have a little, little look at those resources for part of your research. You're doing your research, a couple of things to remember. Um, there's a way of keeping your search history by using something called Journeys, which works on Chrome. Very, very important keep your search history. Do not delete your search history. The reason is if you have any issues with Academic Integrity Office, if you, if you do, they will ask you, okay, I want to see a record of your search history. So do not delete your search history because you very, may, you very well may be showed, asked to show your search history. Um, Another thing you can use, which is useful, I'll just click on this, is MyBib. And MyBib is a really useful referencing tool. Um, you can add any references that you want to use. So I'll give you an example. Let's have a look at MyBib. So if you're using MyBib, just make sure it's set to Harvard Australia style. I'll just very quickly show you. If you have an online article, you can copy the URL and paste it into MyBib and it will automatically generate the reference. Um, it's saying there's no publication date. Let me just check. Publication was 2024. So I just need to add that in. And just make sure you click that you viewed it today. Save. And it's generated the reference. So MyBib is a really good way of keeping a record of all your references. Another thing you can use is Evernote. You can get a free trial of Evernote. And that's really good for just organizing your notes. I'm going to talk about how to structure an assignment in more detail. So remember that reports have sections, essays have paragraphs. Um, quite often, the assignment will have a guideline for how many words that they want you to use. So for example, um, this is my fictional essay about booking.com. And, you know, I've broken it down to approximately how many words I would need for each section. As a rough guide, um, I would say you want about 10% for an introduction and conclusion. So if it's a thousand word, you want 100 for introduction, 100 for conclusion, leaving you with about 800 words. That's three or four paragraphs. 
As a rule, I would say around, you want to use around 300 words per paragraph. So once you start to break it down into sections and into how many words that you need for each section, um, the assignment just becomes a bit more manageable if you approach it as, okay, I need to write 250 words, do that. Okay, now I need to write 300 words. Rather than being overwhelmed by the thought of writing 1,500 or 2,000 words. Another way to think about an assignment structure is to think of it as in an, an hourglass shape. So by that, what I mean is when you begin with your introduction, you start to talk about things quite generally. So, for example, by giving a background of um, the subject or the case study and then starting to focus a bit more on what you're going to do. So if I was going to write about Booking.com, um, which is a travel company, and how they collect consumer data, I might start off just generally talking about how companies collect data, why companies collect data. I might do a bit of a background about booking.com um, and then start to talk more about what's the focus of that particular assignment. In the middle of the essay, you want to narrow it down. So if you're looking at a particular subject or a particular case study, this is the time to look and focus on that case study not to talk about the whole industry in general. As you get to the conclusion, you can broaden out a bit. So I might have found out some interesting things about um, booking.com and about how they work and how they do things. And then I can think in the conclusion, I can think about how did the booking.com methods apply to the travel industry in general? Um, you know, what can we learn about how Booking.com do things? Here I've given you some examples using language. So I'm going to click on the star. I'm not going to read through each of these sections because you can do, you can go onto the online activity and find this information. But this is just a kind of step by step of what you can include in an introduction, a main body and a conclusion. So it shows you how you can start fairly general, maybe giving some definitions, move on to looking at the assignment in context. Context means the situation um, or the surroundings in which something happens. You often might be asked to do something like a thesis statement. Don't get too confused by that. All that is really is it's telling it's telling um, the reader what's important about this assignment and you know what are you trying to do in this assignment. Um, so in this in this um, essay about Booking.com, I was I'm saying it's really important to understand how companies use client data because it gives those companies a competitive advantage and it benefits customers. Final thing to do in your introduction is just to do a plan or an outline. And if you read that, you can see basically that's exactly the same as the assignment question. It tells you, I'm gonna do this, this, and then this. First, second, and third. Some ideas for the main body include starting with a topic sentence, using ideas and evidence from sources. So this is where you're gonna use referencing um, such as paraphrasing or quotation. Again, go to one of the referencing workshops to find out a little bit more about how to do that. You're gonna give your opinion or your analysis, discussing what your findings are, and you might want to do um, just a sentence at the end to tie everything together. In the conclusion, you it's a good idea just to restate the assignment question 
to remind people what you were trying to do, summarize what your main findings were, and then make some recommendations. Few last little things to remember, avoiding plagiarism. Again, I'm sorry to be emphasizing this so much. I just want to make sure that all the KBS students have the best opportunity and the best chance to do well. And that means to make sure that you're including referencing within your assignments. Um, I've got here a link to my, B, my bib and the KBS Harvard referencing guide which will give you all the information you need to know about using correct referencing. Final little things to remember, don't forget to use an academic and professional finish. One thing I really, really want you all to remember and have access to Microsoft, um, have I put 356, I mean 365, I do apologize. Um, all students have their own Microsoft account through KBS. And all you do to sign in is sign in with your cap with your um, registered Kaplan email, okay, and your um, password. You have an account, and assignments should be stored on the cloud. They should not be saved on your laptop, okay. So please bear that in mind. You are not going to get away with using laptop error as an excuse for not doing your work. When you do your assignments, make sure that they're formatted in Arial font, 11 point size and a 1.5 spacing. Your list of references should be on the final page, on a separate page and in single spacing. And Word, the Word program will check your spelling and grammar. Just be very careful about using grammar co uh, correction apps because so many of them use AI that I'm, I'm now just recommending that you, you check your grammar and do your grammar corrections on Word, which works perfectly well for that. Okay, so any more, if you want any more information, if you want any more help, go to the ASC. You can get more resources, join more workshops or get individual help. If you scan, um, this QR code, you'll get access to this uh, workshop document with all the interactive, in, sorry, interactive activities. Thank you very much for joining. I really hope that you've learned something and it's been my pleasure to help you.